I've been developing this game for two years. It's called Couch Combat and it is a split screen multiplayer FPS. But not too long ago, I was informed that it was a little bit too basic. My game was just a split screen FPS with fast paced rounds and a low poly art style. And while there really aren't many other split screen games for PC out there that reach the same niche as mine, my game doesn't really have enough unique about it to grab the attention of people. Plus, it can get a little bit stale whenever you play it for a while, as the short rounds begin to get repetitive. So that's why I need a twist. In this case, the twist is a simple, marketable addition or change to the game that enhances it. I would also like for that twist to make the game more playable and unique. These are big goals for one single feature, so I spent a long time brainstorming trying to get it right. But after a little while, I had my idea for the twist firmly in place. I'm a huge fan of Risk of Rain 2, and it might just be my second favorite game ever, right under Amori my beloved. The game is a roguelike, and so RNG plays a big part in how each run progresses. But the game is balanced so incredibly well that it almost never feels like you're getting screwed over by luck, unlike other roguelikes. But the main thing that I want to glean from Risk of Rain 2's design is how the game becomes more and more chaotic as it goes on. The insane combination of items and crazy amount of enemies and projectiles makes the game chaotic in a fun way that'll probably result in you getting one shot in the back of the head four hours into a run, but it's also quite a bit of fun. So, here's how I'm going to apply this to my game with a new twist I've created, modifiers. Now modifiers and mutators aren't a new idea by any means, they can be found in everything from Streets of Rogue to Halo, but I think I have a unique way of mixing these modifiers with a bit of RNG to create controlled chaos. At the end of each round, players will be allowed to vote on a choice between two random modifiers, and whichever one of these wins the vote is added to the next stage. But older modifiers stay and stack, so as you play rounds, more and more modifiers are added, adding more and more chaos to their game as it goes on. Then, every 10 rounds or so, a random, bigger modifier is added to the game. Most modifiers do something relatively small, like adding low gravity or a new small mechanic to the game. But this big modifier is designed to completely change the way that the game works for one round. Then after this round with the big modifier ends, all the modifiers, including the big one, are removed and you start over with no modifiers. I think that this system will increase the flow between rounds by adding more uniqueness to each one as well as adding a big 10th round to look forward to. Plus, this allows me to implement community ideas for modifiers, which is always fun. But the best way for me to see if the system is any good is for me to actually make it and then playtest. So that's what I'm going to do in this devlog. But first, if you like the game and want to support the channel, then the best way that you can do that is just to wishlist it on Steam. There's also a free demo on Steam, and you can try it out if you want to. Wishlisting the game is incredibly helpful, as having more wishlists on release makes Steam push my game in the algorithm, which is incredibly helpful for an indie dev like me with no marketing budget. For the new modifier system, I decided to split the game into two modes, Classic Mode and Arcade Mode. Arcade Mode is going to be the version of the game that exists now, where you get complete control over what stages and guns spawn. Classic Mode will not let you pick that stuff, but will have the modifier choice system that I talked about just a second ago. The reason that I'm not letting the player change game options directly in Classic Mode is just because I want to be able to make modifiers that change these game options. That way I can do things like having a modifier that makes only pistols spawn. Let me know in the comments if you think this is a good idea, because I'm not 100% sure on it yet. And also after I finish classic mode, arcade mode will get modifiers added as well, but you'll be able to directly choose which ones you want, just like guns and stages. Splitting the game into two different modes just required me to make some improvements to the main menu with a new placeholder screen. I plan on overhauling a lot of things in the main menu soon, so this will eventually look better, but for now there's a button for arcade mode and also one for classic mode. Modifiers were also a fairly simple system to make in code. There's just a new game object that persists between scenes that has a script for managing modifiers on it. These modifiers are represented with a custom class and an array that has a few simple attributes. Scripts like player movement will get references to the script and then be able to change things based on which modifiers are enabled. This system is fairly simple and easy to extend, so I made a few of the first modifiers to test it out. The first two modifiers were basic, just one that doubled health and one that made the game feel like it was low gravity by adding a slight upwards force to the player's rigid body. But then I took a break to work on some other parts of the game. Last devlog, I began development on a katana, and so I finished it up. I had to create a new script for melee weapons, but now I can add more melee weapons to the game in the future much more easily, so I might just do that sometime. And I also gave the katana a dash. The dash disables the player's rigid body and then moves it straight forwards, while also collision checking for terrain. This allows it to go through players but not through terrain, although it can still clip through it sometimes, so it needs a bit more work. Other than that, I just added a bunch of polish and particles to the katana. It still needs sounds, but it's overall very nice. 
The katana only spawns in the samurai area on these katana stands, and I think that it adds a lot of uniqueness to the samurai area. At this time, I also made a few more of the improvements that were requested by people in the reddit thread from the last video. A few of the main changes that I made were first of all slightly turning up screen shake. Not too much, but the guns are quite a bit more satisfying to use now. I also fixed things like a huge glitch in the drop-in menu that made it nearly impossible to have more than two controllers connected, and I also fixed the settings menu by making it actually save correctly, and I also happened to mostly fix the long-standing issue of guns falling through the stage. To do this, I just added friction to the physics material of the stage, because apparently not having it messes up collisions in Unity, and this made collisions much more consistent for the pickups, which was quite a relief. I've added potions to the fantasy area and a katana to the samurai area, so the next area on my list to improve was the outrun area. The outrun area will be receiving a variety of improvements, as it is probably the worst area from a gameplay perspective. I'm going to add a new gimmick in the future, but right now I'm just implementing a smaller feature to set it apart. Randomized stages. Well actually, it's just a few part of the stage that have a chance to spawn. Basically it's possible for a few extra islands to spawn, plus stuff like a jump pad. This makes the stages more replayable and unique and I really like it. I also updated the wall rating controls and now they are more in line with games like Titanfall and overall just less janky. Overall for the outrun area I still have quite a bit more to do and in the future I'll be totally redoing two terrible stages and also adding a big new gimmick to it and hopefully that'll just make it a lot better overall to play. Getting back to working on classic mode, I made a modifier menu that shows up in between rounds. It's very basic looking and somewhat placeholder now, but you can choose between two modifiers that are randomly selected. If there's a tie in the vote, then whichever modifier was chosen by the player who won the last round is picked. So now that menu's done, there's just one last thing for me to complete in this devlog. But this final item was by far the most time consuming one I had to do, making modifiers. I made 10 in total, which is just barely enough to be able to test out the system in game. I planned all these modifiers out in Millinote beforehand and also have a bunch more planned for the future. But if you want to suggest more modifiers, feel free to comment them on this video or even better, join my Discord server with a link in the description and suggest them there. A few of the simpler modifiers I've already made are Calcium, which doubles everybody's health, low gravity Canned Jump, which adds a double jump, which stacks as the air potion in the fantasy area. Big Boom, which is inspired by Halo and makes explosions knock you back three times further, but doesn't actually increase damage from them. Rubber Bullets, which makes all guns deal less damage, but instead do knockback. This knockback increases more for how much damage the gun would usually do. Another modifier I made is Teleports Behind You, which just makes everybody spawn with katanas. And Gun Drought, where less guns spawn. But I also made a few more complicated modifiers. The first one was Personal Bubble, and this makes it so that if two players touch, they both die in an explosion. And the final two modifiers I made are Belated Self-Defense, which makes players drop a bunch of grenades on death, they explode one after another, and also Pinata Party, which makes players drop candy that behaves like potions in the fantasy area and heal for 20 HP each. Pinata Party also plays a party streamer sound and confetti like Grump Birthday Party from Halo. Keep in mind that all these modifiers can mix together, so you can have players spawning candy on death, but also spawning grenades which launch that candy all over the place. And stacking low gravity, can jump, and the air potion in the fantasy area leads to absolutely insane mobility. I also made these modifiers reset every 10 rounds, so what's next for modifiers? Well, I'm gonna start by adding big modifiers to the game. I also need some sort of UI to show which modifiers are enabled, as well as actual non-stock image icons for the modifiers, but I think there's a lot of potential for the system. Plus, you can still play the game without it in arcade mode, so hopefully this pleases everybody and makes the game better. Couch Combat is getting super close to release, and now that school is almost out for me, I can focus more on it. After Classic Mode, I basically just plan on polishing the menus, improving the Steam page, bug fixing, and adding stuff like controller rebindings to the game. And then it's basically done. So yeah, be sure to wishlist and like and subscribe and stuff. Thank you to my legendary Patreon, Howard House the Valiant, King of Boat by Land. And also thank you to my new Patreon, Sean Rabin, who would be the most famous person alive if all their work wasn't classified. Bye.